Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Daryl. Welcome to week three. So this is the week we're gonna start working on our main project. Uh, I tried to get everyone's uh, project plans back to you today. Most of you are on the right track. I think you're thinking uh, the right things about this. Uh, some of you um, were giving me fairly thin plans. So you're still gonna have to think of a little more stuff you know, we're shooting for a target time of three to four minutes that you're going to make your presentation. So that's what we're all focused on about this week. Uh, we, we try to strip down some of the other stuff. We do have some reading for you, uh, but uh, this week's discussion is not a graded activity. So really there's only one main project this week. You're gonna take the plan that you had for a presentation and you're gonna turn it into a completed presentation this week. That means you're gonna do all the phases of it. You're gonna you're gonna go from the plan to having your full story script. Uh, I suggest you write it out. You don't have to, you don't have to turn a script into me or anything. But in order to do a voiceover, it's a really good idea to have a script. So you wanna work on that script first. Writing it down helps you control for time. Again, we're trying to shoot for three to four minutes in length here. And um, you can control for time because uh, we've discovered that pretty much uh, one page double spaced of type uh, amounts to about a minute spoken out loud. So uh, that means that you'd be going for about three to four minutes of a script. If you rehearse the script several times before you speak it, you're gonna have a better chance. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, pretty optimistic that most of you are gonna do really well on the voiceovers because Last week's emotional story was terrific. Everybody pretty much knocked it out of the park. Everybody's really using your voice well and you're, you're, you're uh, talking well and you're, you're creating great stories. Uh, I will get you more feedback on your emotional stories uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, but today I wanted to concentrate on getting plans back to everybody so that you're all in shape. You're ready to use the entire week to do the, uh, the, the presentation. And again, by, by going through the proper steps, you've done the planning, now write the script and do the voiceover, get your voiceover done first. I, I recommend to everyone that you get your three to four minute audio in place before you start working on slides. And then once you've got that in place, you've got a lot of options for how you wanna work. If you're a filmmaker, you can use uh, uh, film tools like uh, iMovie or uh, Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Um, uh, those of you that used Adobe Spark last week and liked it, I think that's an excellent tool. So I think a lot of you should use, think about using Adobe Spark for this. And uh, all of you now have PowerPoint. So you've got the latest, greatest version of PowerPoint. PowerPoint um, on the desktop allows you to record your audio. Um, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about PowerPoint today talking about some of the options you can use for uh, uh, putting your presentation together. You've got a whole lot of options. There's a lot of on online tools. We wanna talk about that today. So um, in the reading, again, um, part of uh, what Nancy Duarte is writing about this week is uh, how to create your story, how to put your content together so it really has impact on everybody, how you can really come across and you know, we, we've, we've talked about the ways that's gonna happen. You're gonna focus on your audience. You know who you're talking to. Once you know who they are, you know how to appeal to them. You know what things to say. You know what references to make. You know what jokes to make. You know what kind of art to use. So the audience is very key in all your decision-making in creating your presentation. Um, and then we're gonna get to reach them by telling stories. We're not just gonna throw stuff out there. We're gonna take everything we have to say and put it into a cohesive narrative that people will want to hear. And so that's, that's why storytelling is the basis of all uh, great presentations. And once we're telling those stories, we wanna use the visuals to show, don't tell them. So uh, we will speak our narrative, we will use the slides, we will use the video, we will use the, the visual multimedia portion of our presentation tools to show people what we're talking about. 
And to that end, uh, I have a little exercise that I want to uh, play with you guys today. Uh, those of you that are going to watch on the video, uh, you, you can um, see that in the discussion board this week. I want to talk a little bit more about what's in the discussion uh, since it's not a graded activity. But uh, the, I have an exercise for you guys to work on right now, and we can work on it later today. It's not graded or anything. It's just to help you. It's called Visualize Ideas. It's about the notion that when you're talking about yourself, and again, this, this presentation is you putting your, your skills, your brand, your, your, your uh, services forward, offering them to an employer. So you need to talk about yourself. A lot of people hate doing that. A lot of people hate the kinds of things that you're supposed to put on a resume, like, oh, I'm a self-starter, or you can, I'm dependable, or whatnot. And you you expect to have those things on a resume, but when you say them out loud, they kind of come, become cliches. But they become cliches because everybody says the same words. And that's fine. Uh, we need common language for a lot of things. But in terms of having an impact on the audience, the way that you can overcome that is to visualize those terms in ways that are unique to you. So that's what I want to try having an exercise about. Um, uh, let me put this back. Uh, let me go into the uh, discussion board. Um, I've created a Google page in which I have a shared document. And I'm going to give you the URL. I'm going to put the URL in the, uh, the, the chat box so all of you can click on it. If you click on that link, you'll be connected to this page. Now, the thing about a, a, a Google shared document is I'm giving editing permissions to everyone who comes to this page. That means we all own this page. That means we can all do anything we want. And it's a little bit dangerous. I'm trusting you all. It means that anybody could do select all and delete and, and wipe out the entire page. So we have to we have to have rules for the road to work together. Now, when you come in uh, and you can see that there are a couple of people, this is probably gonna keep growing as you guys click on this link and, and we're adding more people who are connected. Each one of you has your own color. And that means that your cursor is your color. And wherever your cursor is, you can change things. Now, what we don't wanna do is wipe out what something, wipe out what someone else has done. So uh, to this extent, I've created all these multiple boxes that you can, you can claim. So the idea here is I've got several uh, terms that are just kind of generic language that you might be using about yourself. It's the kind of thing that might be on a, on a resume, that you're adventurous, that you're dependable, you're a team player, you're eager, you're a problem solver. Those are all things that you might want to say about yourself and that if you say them, you'll probably sound like everyone else. However, because we're illustrating our narratives, I want you all to go out and find unique visual analogs for these uh, abstract ideas. And that's what this exercise is about. This is about visualizing ideas. And it's not just visualizing them, but visualizing it for yourself, visualizing it for your specific audience. The challenge here is to think about how am I going to express this idea in ways that express who I am, that connect to my audience, that meet their visual sophistication, et cetera. So you really wanna choose the right artwork, the right imagery, the, uh, the right level of visual sophistication. You can, you can do this with little cartoon art, but you know, and, and reach sixth graders with it. But if you're trying to talk to a, a, the head of a company and impress them, you might wanna have a uh, higher, more sophisticated language. So I, I'm, what I'm doing here is, uh, under each term, I want you to try to just pick a, a visual that illustrates it. And it illustrates it to your satisfaction and to the mind of whom you're trying to talk to. So remember, each of you has your own target employer that you're trying to impress. So in this first one, uh, notion, I've, I've got to start it off. Uh, to, to illustrate the term adventurous, I've got a guy who's just standing on the edge of a cliff looking forward into the mountain range. So to me, that's a painting. It, it, it speaks to aspirations and so on and so forth. So I wanna show you, I'm gonna do another one here. So each of you, I have lots of boxes here. So we have plenty of space for everybody to work in. Uh, but underneath each word, I want you to just 
work on the analog for that. So um, if you're going to work on the word team player, then it'll be somewhere in this column. And I'm going to I'm going to do team player right now. I'm going to put my name under here. So I'm claiming this box. I don't want anybody else to take this box. Now. We have two boxes. We have the little name box with the word name on it. And that's where you're claiming it. And the box above it is the larger image, the larger space for the image. And to do this, once you've claimed the box, I want you to put your cursor. Remember, your cursor has your own color on it. So you're going to put your cursor in this box. That means that when you find an image, it's going to put the image in that spot where you intend it. That's what we're all doing here. So. Um, this is a page built by Google, and into the actual Word document is built Google Search. That's pretty cool. So if I go to Insert, up here to the top of the menu, Insert Image, Search the Web, I get a, go I get a nice little uh, Google Web search box built right into this page. And we can actually uh, access Google's database right from here. So I could put in the term team player. Each of you are probably gonna put in the actual term first time out. And uh, remember, I don't want anybody choosing the very first image. You, know, you don't wanna be that guy. Uh, but here in team player, I'm seeing a lot of soccer. Uh, you know, that expresses that image, but it's not really what I'm looking for. And I actually have a particular notion in mind. So remember, when you're using the search engine, you don't just have to search on the term itself. You can. You can look for specific things. You, you're, look, you're thinking about your own analogies, not necessarily Google. So you can use this search engine to search for anything. I have a particular notion in mind. So instead of typing in team player, I'm gonna type in skydive team. And we're gonna get all these cool pictures of people jumping in formation through the, through the air. To me, that says team player. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna look for various images Oh, and, and here's a really nice one that I like of the formation coming together and a guy just coming up to it. So I want to select it. I'm going to click it and I have a little blue check mark on it. And down at the bottom of the page, it says one selected. So now if I click on this blue bar down at the bottom, it takes that image and it puts it in the window for me. So that's what I'm asking everyone to do. And it didn't hit the right part of it. All right, hit insert, and there we go. And so uh, that's what I'm going to ask you guys to do. Just stake off some windows, go searching for terms, look for term, look for visuals that express your own level of sophistication, that connect with an audience of, of the sophistication you're looking for. Uh, you know, we're trying to be creative here. We're not, but we also need to be clear. We want to be. Uh, you know, um, if you're too abstract, people won't get it. If you're too basic, it'll, it'll uh, uh, seem generic. So you're looking for that edge where you know you're communicating clearly with your audience, but you're speaking to that audience's taste and sophistication. So if your audience is game players, you might be looking for game playing art and so forth. So if your audience is graphic designers, then maybe you want to have fine art or photography. If your audience is filmmakers, you might have movie clips. So the choices you choose for illustrating uh, your ideas come down to who you are and who you're talking to. So I'll let you guys play with that. Um, that's just something you can be working on while I'm talking. I'm going to go back to this and get back into uh, the lecture here. So um, Back to the discussion board. I told you this week's activity, this week's discussion board uh, does not have a graded activity about it. Nobody has to post. But the discussion board is there as a helpful uh, tips and, 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 and uh, feedback loop for everybody while you're working. Everyone's working on your presentation. And I have already seated the discussion board with a couple of uh, interesting movies that uh, I think might be helpful to you and a couple of links and uh the the link into to the uh, um visualize ideas thing that i just posted in the discussion board or posted in the chat box is also on the discussion board so those of you who are watching this on video 
you can go to the discussion board and participate in this all week. So I'm, I'm encouraging everyone, not just who's here today live, but who's watching on video uh, to participate in that activity. So um, the videos that I posted in the discussion board are, um, um, about helping you figure out the structure, about helping you coming up, come up with the story that you wanna tell. Uh, some people have a little bit of trouble with this. So in the discussion board, I have two videos. The first one is an actual TED Talk. It's by a fellow named Simon Sinek, and it's called Start With Why. And this might be very helpful for some people in terms of figuring out how do you turn uh, what, what I'm asking you to do into a story. Most of you, uh, when I say you're, you're going for your dream job, you're, you're, you're really focused in on your thinking about your resume. And if I ask you to make a presentation, you're sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to take my resume and I'm going to speak it out loud. Well, that's sort of true. But just like we said, a bunch of facts is a boring presentation. If you just simply read your resume and you say, I did this, I did this, I went to school here, you know, then I did this, that's a list of things that happen. They're all true, but they don't have any story or drama about it. Uh, the, the, the kind of, uh, anybody that's unmuted, I should mute themselves. Um, the kind of uh, things that you might put in your resume are facts. They're things that really happen. They're things people need to know. And they're things that should be in your, your narrative, your story, but they, you don't just list them as a series of facts. People don't quite figure out, well, how do you get there? Well, uh, what Simon Sinek does in this video, and it's, it's uh, very helpful to a lot of people, is he tells you that the stuff that's in your resume, you know, I worked here, I did this, I was in the army, you know, I, went, I, I got this degree here. That's what you did. And he says, don't tell us what you did, tell us why you did it. If you wanna look at your resume and turn that into your, uh, the story of your life, don't just recitate the facts of what you did. Go back to each one of those items on your resume and tell us why you did what you did. You were in music school. Why did you go to music school? You were in the army. Why did you go to the army? If you tell us why, then it deals with your intrinsic motivations. And that naturally becomes a story. We're invested in why you made the choices to do what you did. And then we'll be much more curious to know about the things that you learned and did. So uh, if you're looking at your resume and wondering how to turn that into a story, look at everything on your resume and, and tell us why you did each of those things. I guarantee that will link up and become a really interesting story. So I highly recommend everyone watch the Simon Sinek video. The second video is a little more esoteric. It's about how you deal with multiple facts at the same time. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's how to structure a video essay by Tony Zhou. And he really is uh, looking at a documentary by Orson Welles that has more than one subject. Instead of having just two, one subject or two subjects or three subjects, uh, Orson Welles' F for Fake has six different subjects that are covered in the film. And instead of being six separate films, he tells e a bit of each uh, story a little bit at a time and then jumps back and forth. So there's a parallel structure. He tells all these things in parallel. And that becomes an interesting way to organize a story. Now that won't work for everybody, but for some of you, if you had a complicated life, if you did several things, if you had a couple of careers and you aren't sure how they all linked up, that may be an interesting way of, of, of how to tell your life, uh, how to tell your story. So uh, uh, watch it, and if it's helpful to you, use it. If it's not helpful to you, you can just move on. But I put these things in the discussion board so that you can use them at your will. Also in the discussion board, are um, a number of um, articles that I've linked to. 
So uh, as we work this week, we're going to start working with tools. We're going to start work, working with multimedia tools. And you're going to guys are going to need help. You're going to, going to try out different things. So I've got some articles in there on how to use your iOS device to record audio, whether it's your iPhone or your iPad. And I've got a, uh, another one about how to use your Android phone to record audio. So if, if that's the primary uh, media tool you have, your phone, then uh, we want to be able to take the best advantage we can uh, of for recording audio. And to this extent, uh, the real trick on using your phone is to not use your phone voice. Basically, we all use our phones the same way. We press the phones right up to our face, and so we speak very softly because the receiver is right at our mouth. But that's a kind of a whisper. That's our phone voice. I want you to speak this presentation in your room voice. I want you to speak out loud into the entire room as if everyone in uh, you know, whatever room you're in can hear you. And that's a louder, more projective kind of way of talking. And in order to record that properly, you can't have the phone right up on your face. You've got to have the phone about four or five inches away. When you use your room voice, you're using much more power in, in, your, in the air in your mouth and it's, it's coming out and it's really powerful. If the phone is too close, we're gonna get a, a, a distorted audio on the phone. So the, uh, the trick there is just to simply hold the phone up four or five inches away, that's all you really need to do. And you can talk in a normal voice and you get a very good, different kind of tone in your voice than the, 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 the sort of intimate whisper that you have when you're speaking on the phone to a friend, you're gonna have the room tone in which you're speaking to everyone. And that's what we wanna hear in a presentation. So uh, the microphones in smartphones are really good. Uh, you're gonna get great recordings. All you need to do is just make sure that you're not holding the phone a little too close. And there are, are tools on the uh, smartphones that let you record those apps. And, uh, and the same deal with uh, your computer, one of the things you need to know about the computer, the first thing you should try to uh, think about before you record your voice on the computer is look, in wh look where the microphone is. On most laptops, the microphone is actually at the back of the keys, right where the hinge of the, uh, uh, the laptop is. So it's really kind of far away from you. If you're sitting upright at a desk and your laptop is on a table, you're probably 30 or 40 inches away from that microphone and you're gonna get a kind of a weak recording. So if that's the microphone and you're using a built-in microphone on a laptop, maybe you wanna lean in a little bit and be a little bit closer to it. If you have an external microphone that you can plug into your computer, uh, then that's even better. And if you're using like a game headset that has an earpiece with a, a microphone on it, that works really well. It usually keeps your micro, uh, the, the microphone positioned right close to your face, but not too close. So uh, just think about the distance you are from the microphone. And that is, if you're too far away, your voice is too soft. If you're too close, your voice is too loud. And uh, it doesn't take an audio engineer to understand those things. It's just, uh, you know, basic physics. So uh, we're going to be talking about recording uh, ourselves and, and, and putting tips and trips uh, uh, if you guys have suggestions, if you've used a program uh, that, that you think is really helpful and you wanna help your classmates, you can post in the discussion board. No one has to post. It's a zero weighted activity, but it's there for everyone to pass information back and forth. Also, if you've written a script and you wanna get feedback on it before you start voicing it out loud, you can post there and you can get feedback from your classmates and so forth. So you can use that and this discussion board is actually gonna be open for two weeks. It's gonna be open next week during week four as well. So towards the end of the week, I'm gonna encourage you to actually post the finished presentations up so you can get feedback on the whole piece from your classmates next week. So we're gonna use the same discussion board from this week and next week just um, for uh, getting feedback and passing tips back and forth. Now, um, one of the bits of reading that we're having you do this, this uh, week, uh, we don't have a whole lot, but we have a little bit more uh, from each book that we're getting you to look at. 
And uh, one is talking about how to relate to a particular type of audience. And uh, there is uh, something that goes back almost 3,000 years to the ancient Greeks. And it's called the three pillars of public speaking. This is posited by Aristotle. The ancient Greeks loved public speaking. It was a, a kind of a, a form of entertainment for them. And so, uh, you know, in the same way that you guys watched a whole bunch of TED Talks, the ancient Greeks had people standing up in public and speaking on different topics. And, uh, you know, they'd uh, either get applause or uh, people would throw rotten fruit at them. Uh, you know, it was a tough, tough crowd. But um, if you wanted to win over the crowd, you had to appeal to them. And Aristotle, after having watched a whole lot of speakers, and this is something that's held up through the ages, so we're, we're still using his advice after all these years. He, he theorized that there are three ways to relate to the audience, uh, depending on your situation, your relationship to them. So the, the three ways of addressing an audience is you can appeal to their trust or credibility. This is the appeal to ethos. You're, you're, you, the audience is going to listen to you because you're standing there and you're authentic. You're using the hail in your voice. They can understand you. Uh, they believe you. You, you. you seem honest. You're sincere. Uh, you're speaking in, a, in a, a, a good way. Maybe you've got credentials for uh, why you're an expert on the topic. Uh, you don't necessarily always have to have credentials. You can, you can have lived experience. But Ethos means people are listening to you because they believe what you have to say. Another way, if, they, if, if, the, if you're not necessarily really experienced, but you're eager or you're, or, you know, you're, you're really uh, enthusiastic, the appeal is to ethos or, or it's to pathos. It is the appeal to emotion. So instead of saying, I'm an expert, you can just say, I'm really enthusiastic. I'm really, you know, I, I have a great love of this subject. And your passion is what will connect with the audience. So oftentimes, if you're um, like uh, a student and you don't have a lot of experience, then you're going to sell yourself on your enthusiasm. And that's a way to connect with the audience. And the third way to connect with the audience is with uh, pure logic. And this is the appeal to logos that you put together a, uh, an argument that is built up against criticism. And so every time you state a fact, you say where the fact came from. Every time you mention something, you, 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 you reference it out. So you're constantly looking for the audience to be looking for holes in your argument, and you're actually providing what, the footnotes and logic to say that everything makes sense. And that you convince your audience because everything is so logical. So each of these has a few important points that I want to talk about. The appeal to ethos, uh, the audience, does the audience respect you? This really has to do with the audience having a relationship and accepting you as a credible narrator on whatever topic you're speaking on. Does the audience believe you're a good character? Does the audience believe that you're generally trustworthy? Does the audience believe that you are an authority on this topic? And again, authority is a relative term. You know, you can, you can be a doctor with, you know, five PhDs and that will be your authority and people will listen to you because you're Anthony Fauci and, and, every, and you say, you know, cover your face with a mask and everybody says, oh yeah, he's, he's, a, he's been a doctor for 70 years, I'll believe him. It doesn't have to be your resume though. You could be wanting to talk about cancer and just be a 13 year old and you haven't been to medical school or, or anything like that but your mother died of cancer and you lived through it for the last two years. And that lived experience gives you authority to speak on that topic. So the audience wants to know from where does your authority come? It may be from years of study. It may be from a degree. It may be from a personal experience, but the audience wants to believe you. And that's what ethos is all about. In pathos, it's all about emotion. Do your words evoke feelings? of love, sympathy, fear. Now, for most people who are just starting out, what you really want is people to like you. You wanna, you wanna have happy emotions. You wanna bring positive feelings. But pathos is a, um, a very potent way of 
affecting an audience and it cuts both ways. It isn't always about happy emotions. It can sometimes be bad emotions. So do your visuals evoke feelings of compassion or envy? Uh, does your characterization of the competition evoke feelings of hate or contempt? So this is what political advertising is all about. Most political advertising, you've ever watched it, never says, I'm great. It says the other guy is awful. They want you to vote for you because you're noting against the other guy. And so political advertising is highly negative. It brings up bad emotions. Now, this is something that's very, uh, that advertising does an awful lot. Uh, and it has to do with competition. You guys don't have to deal with this at all. Uh, I, in fact, in your presentations, I do not want you to talk about other people. I don't want you to say, there are hundreds of other people you could hire for this position. You have three or four minutes of your dream audience's time all to yourself. And all you wanna do is focus in on yourself. Don't ever bring any negativity in there. Don't even say you could hire other people. Why say it? It's, it's something that someone else could say, but if you're promoting yourself. So make sure that when you're using your time in this uh, presentation you're working on this week, that you only focus in on your positive assets and you don't bring any negative thoughts into it because there really is no need. You're not in competition. You're, you, you have the, your audience's sole uh, ownership of their time. So only make them think about you and the great things that you do. But uh, pathos is a very powerful tool. You can make people like things. You can make people dislike things. You can whip people into a frenzy, but you have to be careful with it. It can get away from you. So the, these negative emotions are something that is, is you have to really become uh, fairly sophisticated to be able to use them without having them spring back on you. But pathos, happy emotions is really easy to start with and is really easy to project and to reach an audience that way. And so, you know, we often have just pictures of kittens and puppies and whatnot just to get people having happy feelings and happy moods. In Logos, does your audience, does your message make sense? Is your message based on facts and evidence? And, and in this case, we often see lots of footnotes. We often see charts and graphs with references to where they came from and so on and so forth. You don't want your audience to ever say, oh, you didn't tell me what, what, you know, what that's based on. You, you want them to always be uh, thinking that a critical audience can't find any holes in your argument. Will your call to action lead to the desired outcome that you promised? So if you're telling the story in the beginning, middle and end way, then your takeaway is exactly where you've been leading up to in a logo space argument. You're going to want to buy this product because you're going to want to join this cause because you're going to want to hire me because everything you said leads inexorably to the takeaway. Uh, and uh, almost think of it like the closing summation of a legal trial. You, you're bringing all the evidence together and you're saying, this is why you must irrefutably hire me, buy this product, join this cause, etc. So sometimes these things overlap. Sometimes you might have an argument with partial ethos and partial pathos or uh, whatnot. It's rare that they all overlap, but when you do, you certainly got a, a winning argument. But for the most part, you're, you're going to be all one or the other and or maybe an overlap of two. But uh, these, are, these are ways to think about how you might relate to the audience. And they help you figure out how to tell or create your story. So uh, this might not be something to think about ahead of time, but to analyze afterwards when you, you kind of realize how well it worked or didn't work. So um, next week, once you've all made our complete presentations and turned them in, and I want complete presentations this week, uh, finished, you, you know, I want the audio in place, I want the slides in place, I want it all working together. Uh, then we're going to evaluate them and we're going to make them better. We're going to improve them with feedback next week. This week, I want you to get all the elements in place. So, um, uh, let's come back and see. Uh, Ryan's got some problem solvers, that's a great image. 
Uh, we've got uh, Mel doing uh, uh, eagerness with uh, somebody doing crowd surfing. We got a Rubik's cube. So we've got some great art here. We've got some really uh, good visuals. And I'm going to uh, ask you guys in the, who are watching this on video to continue that as well. So good job there. So um, we talked about the reading. Uh, if I go briefly into the discussion board, um, um, you'll see that uh, blah, 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 blah. I've, I've already put in the, uh, the movies I talked about. This is the Simon Sinek movie. This is the, uh, the Tony Zoe video essay. And here are a series of links. So I have a series of links to different types of uh, creative presentation tools that you might use. Adobe Spark, a lot of you used last week. Emays and Prezi, Haiku Deck. They're online tools that allow you to put uh, slide presentations together. Google Slides is very much like PowerPoint, only it's much simpler, it's a lot less options. The interesting thing about PowerPoint is that it's a really great software, it's really powerful. But at this point, it has so many features that you can get lost if you've never used it before. And in fact, there's something I need to show you in PowerPoint because they've hidden a very important feature for us. And for all of you who are going to use PowerPoint to do your presentations, I need to show you how to do the audio. But uh, you can see these links in here. Note that there's one called VoiceThread. This is a very simple presentation tool. But if you have an older Android phone, you're gonna find that older Android phones don't support a whole lot of the multimedia tools. And if you're having trouble, if you're struggling with uh, the phone that you have, uh, I recommend that you try VoiceThread because it actually works with a lot of older phones and you should be able to get something incredibly put together. You can record audio and put slides together. It works very well in that regard. It's just not super sophisticated. And again, I have links here on how to use, how to do audio with uh, Android and, and uh, iOS. And I have a link to uh, a, uh, a an open source audio tool called Audacity. If you're on a Mac or a PC, this is a, an open source free software that gives you a really great video ed uh, audio editor. Uh, and you, you can see the waveform and you can edit it very quickly. You can export it in, in a lot of ways. So. This is a simple free tool um, if you're not into high-end audio. If you're into high-end audio, you're probably gonna be using you know, GarageBand and, and uh, Logic and lots of Pro Tools and you know, very sophisticated audio programs. This is a free tool for everybody else and, and uh, all of us need to be able to do uh, you know, just simple uh, audio recordings and, and, and be able to put it in our projects and so forth. So uh, I highly recommend Audacity. The, there are um, lots of great tutorials on it in YouTube as well. So that, that's a great way to, to uh, find out what's going on. Um, and finally, the main project this week, uh, 3.4. Uh, there's a short video here on the main page that I want you to watch. It's just a re uh, statement of storytelling and how it works, we talked about this earlier, but this will just be a refresher so that as you're putting your elements together, you can create the, the, the story about yourself and your skills that your dream employer uh, will really connect to. And the instruction sheet here doesn't have a whole lot on it uh, other than what we talked about last week, but it does reiterate what we're looking for here. We want a three to four minute presentation you can use your choice of media tools to put it together uh, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> you turn in your project when you're done at the end of the week by if it's a file, loading it up here. So if you create a PowerPoint file or you create an MPEG-4 movie in Adobe Spark or something like that, you can load your project directly here by uploading it there. If you want to put it, uh, if it ends up being fairly large or or being on another site, you can link to it. So if you have uh, your project hosted on another website, if it's on YouTube or somewhere else, um, uh, or it's in your, uh, your cloud software, you can just give us a link to the project 
and we can look at it there. So either it's a file on your computer and you upload it, or it's a link to somewhere in the cloud and you just let us have it. But uh, make sure that you have something that you upload. And uh, some people get their audio done and they get their slides done, but they have trouble integrating them. I will accept this week that you could turn in your slides and your audio separately, but by next week we have to have them all integrated. So uh, we'll work on that. So the last thing I wanna do is show you that missing trick in PowerPoint. So what I wanna do in PowerPoint is just load it up here. Uh, let's go to the uh, templates, uh, look at our themes. I'm gonna pick a, uh, just a simple theme here, load it up and make a couple of slides. So um, I'm gonna give you a title page here very quickly, slide one. And maybe I'll add a few more slides, insert a new slide and I'll call that one two and insert another new slide and call that one three uh, the, one more slide uh obviously i'll call this one four so uh the thing is sometimes you guys think that the only way to put audio on present on uh, powerpoint files is to add audio to each slide we don't want that we want you to do a three to four minute continuous narrative of your story we want you to script it out we want you to Record it all in one, one piece, have a good continuous story, and then put it in. Now, it's not obvious immediately how to do that in PowerPoint, so I wanna show you how. Uh, the way you work in PowerPoint is you wanna put your audio on slide one. So you want to be on slide one, and in PowerPoint, they actually have recording tools for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, go to insert, audio record audio now i could i could bring in external audio so if i recorded the audio on my phone or recorded audio on uh, audacity i could bring that file in and load it just as a file but if i want to use the built-in tool in uh, powerpoint i just hit record audio and i get a little simple recorder here it's not going to show me the waveform it's not going to let me edit or do anything sophisticated but I can record this and if I don't like it, I can just keep recording until I get it right. So all I have to do to start recording is hit the red button and now I'm recording. You can see the numbers running and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm recording audio for my presentation. So I'm gonna let this go for a little bit and then hit stop and insert. And now I have an audio file on my uh, slide one. Now, the reason I needed to go ahead and create an audio file is that there are hidden menus that don't appear until you actually create and select a, an audio file. If I look up here at the menus, I have eight of them. Home, insert, draw, design, transitions, animations, slideshow, review, view. So they've added some new menus, but uh, anyway, if I look at these first eight menus, that's what's there. If I select the audio file, I suddenly have two more. I have audio format and playback. These menus are not available until you actually select an audio file. So you need to create an audio file and have it on the slide before it's available to you. But when you select this, then I want you to come to the playback menu and select play automatically. So the file will start running as we play. Nobody needs to click to engage the audio. And then very importantly, play across slides. With this clicked, my audio and slide one will now work on all the other slides. So once I have that set, now I have all my audio on slide one and I have a series of slides. The way I move, the way I set my sync is I go to the menu slideshow and I hit record slideshow. So that's an option under the slideshow menu, record slideshow. When I do that, it's gonna put me on slide one and it's gonna start playing the audio automatically. And I, the audio will continue to play and I'll stay on slide one. When I click to advance, it's gonna to go to audio, it's gonna to go to slide two when I tell it to and it's gonna to continue to play the audio. 
So this way I can go through the entire bit of my audio and I can tell the slides when to advance. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to hit record slideshow. And now I'm recording. Now I'm playback. I see the numbers running and as I'm talking to you. And I'm on slide one. I'm recording audio. I click slide two and we've advanced. No, let this go for a little bit. And I click and advance again and click and advance again and click and hit yes. So now we come back and we can see that I put seven seconds of my audio on slide one, three seconds on a slide two, three seconds on slide three, and two seconds on slide four. And I can continue to redo that. If I don't like that sync, I can change it. If I need to come back and change the order of my slides, I can move my slides around and then all I have to do is come back and hit record slideshow and it will play the audio on slide one over again and I can redo the sync. So, uh, but if I get the sync the way I want it, once these numbers are in place and I hit save, it'll play back for everyone else. So this is how you're gonna create a finished slideshow. You're gonna record your audio, put it on slide one, then get as many slides as you need in, and sometimes you might have too many slides or too few slides. Most of the time you have too few slides. And in terms of slides, I don't want anybody to really hold on any slide longer than 20 seconds. So let's do the math on this. I want you to do something that's three to four minutes long. If I want you to at least change every 20 seconds, that means at least three slides per minute. So uh, that means nine to 12 slides. A three minute, a three minute piece with th uh, three slides a minute is nine slides. A four minute piece with three slides a piece is 12 minutes. It's 12 slides. That's the minimum number of slides that I think that you should have in your show. You can have way more. Uh, you don't have to have a zillion, but you want to have a nice visual pace. You want to keep moving through. I don't like the design where you, you put six different images on a single page and then hold there for a minute and a half. That, that's very static. I want you to uh, work in a format where you're just continuously moving along. Now, if you want to have six slides, you can build up to them in different slides. There are a lot of ways to work with slides, but I want you to continuously move from slide to slide and build things up. Uh, that becomes uh, uh, part of the visual pacing that's going to keep the audience in the moment. So um, I want to ask for some questions now. Uh, how's everybody doing? Anybody have any questions for me? You can type them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and just ask a question. Don, did you have a question for me? You hear me? Yeah. Not at this time, but um, um, I'm following along the presentation of what you presented. I set it up, and because this would be my first presentation. So, All right. Well. But I shall get through it, though. All right. You need you need any feedback? Let me know. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions? Does it matter what audio we choose for the project? Well, uh, what audio? It needs to be voiceover. That's what I'm talking about. We want to hear your voice. Uh, you can have music. Um, you can use any music you like. You're not restricted by copyright. This is an educational project. But uh, I do want to warn everybody that if you not have any experience of mixing multiple audio channels of audio, I don't want you to try it without knowing what you're doing. Uh, oftentimes, people bring in the background audio and they bring in really complicated audio and they bring it into the same volume and you can't hear the voiceover. So if you're going to do background audio, realize that primary audio has to be uh, mixed up so that it's louder and background audience needs to be low enough so that it's not interfering. And you need to choose the right kind of audio, meaning that uh, it is not good to have music with someone singing that is a background while you're talking because that's two people talking at the same time and that's, that's a conflict. So um, you can choose any background audio you want, but again, 
you want to make sure that you're complimenting your voice and bringing it forward. Uh, and if you want to have background music, I recommend Adobe Spark because they actually have uh, an actual feature in there. You have to go into the uh, um, options, but you're, it, it takes primary audio and it has something called background audio. And when you put music in as background audio, it naturally lowers it below the primary audio rate and sounds good. Now, if you know what you're doing, feel free to go ahead and do uh, as much audio as you like. But if you've never done it before, um, I don't want that to be a hindrance. And the primary thing is for me to hear your audio. Now, if you're a musician and you want to show off your audio, sometimes the audio is going to be part of the primary audio, but it can't be the entire thing. For instance, you might speak for a minute and a half and then say, here's an example of a tune I wrote and you have 30 seconds of music and that'll be primary audio and then you come back and you talk again. That's perfectly ordinary. It's using your audio as portfolio piece and so forth. And that works really well. Uh, and in terms of audio samples, I really don't like to have audio samples that are longer than 20 or 30 seconds long. Remember, this is a, a three to four minute piece at most. So if you, try to put a two minute song in there, you're really over the, the the weight of the story versus the, the, the portfolio sample. I, I know I went off on a, several tangents there, but did I answer your question, Lewis? Yes. Okay, great. So anybody else have any questions for me? Uh, I'm gonna be around all week. So if there are technical issues or you wanna talk about different types of software, or you're curious about using something, or are, are, are trying different things out. Uh, you know, I want to be available to anybody all week. So, uh, you know, all you need to do is just shoot me a message saying you want to talk about it and, and we can have a little conference and uh, get together. This should be a lot of fun for everybody. This is the week where you start with a blank canvas and you get creative. So this is what you came to school for. This is what I know you guys are going to do a really good job on. Anybody else got anything that they want to ask. If not, I want you to have a really terrific week. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. You're a really creative bunch. Thanks.